All right, development activity. What is it? Why do we use it so much? What exactly is its purpose when it comes to tracking different assets, finding out their viabilities, using it to help optimize our portfolios so much when it comes to crypto? In other words, why do we place it among the same value as top on-chain metrics like MVRV or top social metrics like weighted sentiment or social dominance? Well, we're going to get into all of that here on the video. Before we do, I just want to kindly request, if you're watching us for the first time or even one of the first few times and you haven't subscribed yet, it means a great deal to us here at Santiment if you do hit that subscribe button and even potentially hit that notification bell as it will allow us to reach a wider audience and continue to make these kinds of videos over time. So with that said, let's jump right into development activity here. Now, what I have on the screen here is a near six year article that is just as important now as it was when we released it back in April of 2018. And what it does is meticulously go over the different aspects of why tracking the amount of GitHub activity from different projects is such an important factor when it comes to really reading between the lines as to who these projects are, why they are so important, and really it's not so much a race. Uh, I think a lot of people make the mistake of looking at the development activity metric and saying this asset just overtook this one therefore it is now a better buy for me. That's not necessarily the case. Think of development activity, activity more as kind of a toggle switch where if you see that the light is on meaning there's plenty of productivity within the team then that's a good thing and it probably means that team is caring and potentially what you want to see is a rise over time in the amount of development activity. We'll take a, a brief jump away from this article so I can show you an example of that. This is Ethereum's development activity all time. Obviously it was publicly traded beginning around the summer of 2015 but it was already developing as early as according to our metric at least, January of 2014. And the numbers, of course, matter. Uh, we can see that week by week there are hundreds and hundreds. They eventually get into the thousands and multi-thousands of GitHub activity uh, submissions per week. But the point is, as time has gone on, this project, the number two market cap asset in crypto, has seen more and more innovation and attempt and effort to improve its product to keep up with the latest technological advances on the blockchain and make sure that it's giving users and traders and investors the best experience they can when those people make transactions or just the trustability factor knowing that there's a dedicated team behind a project that is seeing a rising amount of dev activity like this is something that should matter to you whether you're an Ethereum believer or not. There are several other projects, dozens if not hundreds of other projects that have similar increasing uh, development activity. I simply chose this one because it's probably the most famous outside of Bitcoin uh, that has rising development activity over time and obviously unlike Bitcoin we know a bit more about the founder and the uh, a little bit about the team behind them. So on the other end of the spectrum, now I singled out a meme coin here known as Floki, and this is not a shot at Floki whatsoever. I think most people already know of Floki as something of a, a meme coin, something that is based on speculation more so than technological advancements. And that's okay if you're that kind of trader who likes going for more volatile assets that you know have big price jumps like this and then fade and, and stay flat over time and underperform compared to the rest of the markets, that's okay. But it's fairly common knowledge, I believe, that a lot of meme coins, such as Floki, have very little activity. They don't have dedicated teams that are constantly trying to improve the asset. It's certainly not a zero uh, when it comes to development activity because there are times where we see, if you see over on the top left of my screen, you know, weeks where there's one or two. Uh, we even had a few peaks in July of 2023 where there were over over four per week or so on average. And it's kind of flatlined ever since uh, 
a couple months ago. But the point is, if you're looking for a long-term investment, you probably want to be investing in a chart that looks a little more like this in terms of the, the actual developer's efforts and their attempts to improve rather than something like this. Again, one more asterisk I want to mention, we don't have anything against Floki and anything for Ethereum in terms of uh, favoritism. That's not what we're about. These are just two random examples that kind of give contrasting views of long-term improvement efforts over time. So, you know, during any short-term or even mid-term stretch or sometimes even a long-term stretch, Floki may outperform Ethereum, but it's probably not because of the development activity, and I'll leave it at that. Now, going back to this article, there are three main reasons that development activity matters, especially rising or high development activity. Um, for one, the people behind the team believe the project will be successful. You would think that every you know, team out there is believing the project will be successful, but history has shown us that's not the case. There have been hundreds, if not thousands, of rug pull assets out there that have fooled traders in the past. And that's something that this metric helps prevent you from falling into the trap of because you have a transparent view of how much notable activity the project is actually showing at any given time. And I say notable, we'll get to that in a moment. But first, let me finish this short list here. The next is the project is actually shipping more features. Well, naturally, if you see that the team is trying to develop and improve things, they're not just doing, they're not just moving the mouse around for no reason. They're likely trying to drop additions, uh, things that are going to enhance the, the project for anyone who is using it, either for an investment vehicle or for an actual, uh, you know, movement of currency. And then lastly, as I mentioned, there's less probability the project is just an exit scam. Vitally important. It, like I said at the beginning, it's, it's almost like you at least want to see some daily activity because if that's happening, even if it's very little, submissions would still indicate that the team behind it is working to improve and they are not simply absent and hoping that it pumps to a high enough price where they're gonna run for the hills, right? So three or four or five a day is still a lot better than, than zero for most of the month and then maybe one or two at the very end of the month or something like that. You get the idea. Just seeing that semblance of activity can make a massive difference. Now moving down in the article, notice this paragraph right here, which is very important. Yes, there are other websites out there that can track development activity, but it can be very misleading, very, very misleading because you need to be able to actually see what is a notable level of development activity versus just, you know, a Slack update or an end of day uh, refresh on their code, something like that that might show up on the GitHub. But we at Santiment intentionally do not add those mundane routine activities to the development activity metrics. So in other words, in order for development activity to actually show up, it must be something that is showing a semblance of trying to improve the product, uh, making effort to innovate, uh, releasing new products, of course, is an obvious one, but you get the idea. Now, moving down further in the article, we talk about exactly what we're looking for when it comes to development activity. Uh, we re refer to this as kind of a better way of viewing and understanding the development activity by filtering out those mundane and routine tasks that aren't actually conveying the effort to improve or innovate the, the platform over time. So those things that we consider notable include things like the number of code pushes, the number of issue interactions, the number of pull request interactions, number of GitHub wiki edits, number of comments on commits, and number of repos open sourced. And you can of course read more about it at this GitHub event URL here. We also should note that dev activity is not only committing code, but also reporting issues and discussing code changes. Now we did do a back test. Obviously it's almost six years old now, so these are a lot of OG assets, but we actually 
put it to the test to see how much our version of filtered GitHub activity measured up to the actual performances of those assets. And our me methodology actually turned out quite well with Ethereum and Bitcoin right at the top. And then of course Cardano and Monero are still very relevant today. Uh, Verge is still up there. But obviously the landscape is much different and that's why I'll bring us over to the top developed assets now. And actually the reason development activity has been getting some extra traction as of late as a topic in crypto is because internet computer recently exceeded the top three that had been exchanging turns in terms of uh, having the number one spot. So internet computer actually over the past 30 days, which is what we're measuring this as, the daily activity over a 30 day span, they're roughly 5% higher than the nearest project to them now, Cardano at number two. Then we see Kusama and Polkadot, which are always gonna have identical numbers because they share the same GitHub repository. Optimism has actually jumped into number five. They've kind of been in and out of the top 10 over the past year or two. And then going down the list, we have Hedera, Status, Cosmos, Ethereum, as I pointed out in the chart for earlier. Uh, SWE, which is a, a recent new emerger. Chainlink, a very popular one. Aptos, IOTA. And uh, you can explore the list more on your own if you'd like. But one thing I'd like to point out, all of these assets, according to their market cap ranks, are in the top 100 other than status, which is an outlier here. But they are, it's not coincidental. Uh, I, I should also mention Kusama is not the top 100, pardon me, but they share with Polkadot. Um, it's not coincidental that so many of the top developed projects tend to rise toward the top of the market cap ranking. The cream kind of rises to the top, if you will. And um, I think this is kind of a testament to hardworking teams that know that their project has some viability and a certain corner of the crypto sector that they can capture. And, you know, call it, call it um, a bit of chicken or the egg where, you know, the, the project obviously gets a bit of traction and then perhaps it gets a bit of a larger developer team to continue innovating it. But I'm, I'm a believer that if you are consistently sprinkling your portfolio with some of these projects that are showing hundreds and hundreds of uh, GitHub activity submissions a day, it's generally a good thing. And uh, if anything else would provide a, a layer of confidence to the projects that you're holding. They're much less speculative when you know that they're putting up this kind of activity to improve day in and day out. Now I should also mention, we've got filters. So on this tab, for example, I clicked on filter and I just went to our dropdown and I selected DeFi. And what that did is automatically sort for only projects related to DeFi in some respect, according to our watch list that covers DeFi projects. And just to go down the top 10 for this list, we have Osmosis at number one, Radix, DYDX, Synthetics, Fox, Uniswap, Lido DAO, Jupiter, Centrifuge, and Sora Validator Token. Obviously there are a few assets outside the top 500 here, but even still, we're seeing mostly projects that are in the top 100. And that's saying something considering we've filtered out um, probably 80 to 85% of the market uh, by looking at only DeFi projects. Looking at another one, here I filtered for just NFT projects. Um, and you'll notice there might be a few overlapping coins that are both DeFi and NFT, but in this case we have Flow at number one, Decentraland, Metaplex, Axie, Engine, The Sandbox, Avgachi, Monovale, Bounce Token, and NFTX Hash Masks Index. Then one other one I wanted to show off. This is a comparison uh, of different development activities. This was made about a year ago. So as of early 2023, the top 10 assets, technically nine because I have Dot and Kusama combined. Uh, but you can actually see over time how they fluctuate um, versus one another. Of course, remember they're all on their own axis. 
If you want to look at them independently, you can click shared access and it won't really change too much because these are of course the top 10 anyways. Um, and also it's interesting to see that toward the end of the year, especially around the holidays, they've all kind of started to drop off. Um, we'll see if that starts to change, but I am a little interested as to see why so many projects are dipping a bit in terms of daily development activity, but we can explore that on another video, of course. I also want to make an announcement that we are actively working on a development activity dashboard right now. I've taken a look at it. The team is doing an amazing job, and I think you guys are really going to love it. Uh, that way you won't have to just use the data screener. You'll actually have a full-on dashboard with different statistics where you can actively compare project to project, seeing what kind of uh, development activity it's putting out on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. Uh, so stay tuned for that and we'll be sure to give you an announcement. Uh, all of that said, you know, thanks so much for watching guys. If you have questions or clarifications, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments or, or hit us up on our Discord server. And uh, all these links are in the bio for you so you can check them out there. Take care. See you next time.